Hi, Phil the Bee Man here. I got all the bees moved out and there's a real nice echo to my empty bee room. And I have here most of, well about half of my dead outs. I counted about uh, 60 in all on uh, 1300 hives. That gives me about four and a half percent loss or 95% survival. But what I wanted to show you today is uh, the start of my spring testing for mites, keeping on making sure I have another good year next year. I'm gonna use my shaking bottle. It has basically two bottles with the lids glued together and there's a screen in between those glued between those two lids you can probably see how that's made and we're going to fill it with good old windshield washer fluid which at least in my part of the world has quite a bit of methyl alcohol in it in order to uh, keep it from freezing in your vehicle and working at uh, sub-zero temperatures this is rated to minus 40 Celsius, so its alcohol content will be quite high. Uh, as, and you can check if, uh, if your uh, availability would have that. Uh, you're looking for some sort of alcohol warning on the label telling you not to drink it, or if you, <laughs> or I guess if you, if it says uh, go ahead and drink it, it's probably just as good. Uh, but that, that windshield wiper fluid works really well. The soapy water, soap in itself is an insecticide, and then uh, alcohol as well. So that's what we use as our testing fluid. And uh, so I'm gonna go out and take some samples, and I'll show you how I do that. And then, uh, and included in that will be uh, the samples I'm gonna take today are the some of the hives that we did the hop guard test on last fall and i'm keen to see what kind of results we get on that all right so unfortunately this is a destructive test where some bees are going to have to die in order to uh, get accurate results you want to take uh, your sample right off the brood frame these hives have now been out uh, So that means that those hives were, were brooding up a bit inside. They could smell that warm air and they started spring a little bit early. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my sample bottle with the fluid inside and I'm going to drag it across those bees. And they'll fall in and unfortunately drown in the, uh, or die uh, in the alcohol. And I want good sample but I don't want to fill that jar up. I want to actually take that off of several hives and uh, this is the hives that had these cardboard um, hop guard treatment we put in last fall and you'll recall we basically uh, put those that treatment in and then that same visit to the yard we actually then it was a really cool day. We put the treatment in, loaded up the hives, brought them home, and they were the first in the wintering shed and the last to come out. So uh, this, you can see this is basically nothing now but a strip of cardboard. Still has just a, the faintest smell of, of the uh, that hop guard product, uh, which was originally quite an oily, sticky mess. I figured since it was a, uh, a non-synthetic pesticide, that it would uh, probably be safe to leave it in for the winter. I'll do a count on the hives when I'm done, and uh, then we'll have a... So there's two questions. One is, will it um, be a product that can be used in that way, where you put it in, and then it's in that hive for an extended period of time? And so we want to check on, you know, the state of the hives. This one, at least, is the first one. And then the next step question is, did it control the mites? You'll recall that uh, the, the, uh, the yard that I applied that treatment to had low mite uh, 
low but not insignificant mite levels. Uh, the rest of my yards were clean. So we want to know now, um, and I left a couple hives as a control, did it bring those that mite level down over winter? So is it safe for the bees? Is it effective on the mites? Those are the two things you need in a mite treatment. Okay, we got another replicate of this uh, hop guards trial here. So we're just going to walk down the row and count the dead ones. Those are all good. Those are good. One dead one. Good. 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 These here are a control with no strips in them. You got one on this pallet, one weak and one dead. Another control group with a dead one. This is control group with dead one. And here we have this treatment. One dead, another pallet treated, one dead. So when we add all that up. Oh, and, and we took a sample here of the mites. And this is from, sorry, get, this is from the uh, treated hives. I see no mites. So I think that's good. And, uh, oh, wait, 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 wait. Maybe there's one. Yes, there, oh, no, there's a couple. Uh-oh. Uh, one, two... I see two. Right in, trying to stay focused there. Right there is one. So, yeah, that little oval shape. Dead center of the screen right now is a mite. So, <clears throat> thanks Dave. So on our numbers, where did I write those down? Here we are. On the treatment, we lost 4 out of 36. On the control group, 1 out of 12. Uh, and, you know, which is exactly the same, right? Um, yeah, both groups are a little higher than my... I'm running about 95% uh, success overall this uh, season. So, uh, both of these are about double my overall losses but um, better than I was expecting for uh, this group of hives that had high mite levels in the spring.